I know the joy you're going to tell. It's a beautiful day today and tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, this might be real. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Vice President-elect Dan Quayle, Edward Malloy, and the coach Lou Holtz. you fellas, it's damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you and thank you all very much. Vice President-elect Dan Quayle, and Reverend Edward Malloy, Coach Lou Holtz, uh, members of the Congress that are here and distinguished guests and players and coaches and the Irish at heart. Uh, welcome to the White House. My life has been full of rich and wonderful experiences, and standing near the top of the list is my long and honored association with the University of Notre Dame and its legendary hero, Knut Rockne. 
So I want you to know the INF Treaty and George Bush's election were important. But having the Fighting Irish win the national championship <laughs> is in a class by itself. <laughs> Lou, what you've achieved in only three years is inspiring. Maybe you could coach Congress on the deficit. <laughs> With Notre Dame going undefeated this season, they might listen to you. You know, Coach Rockne believed there are no shortcuts to success. Practice and hard work, combined with respect for your opponent, is the path one must take to achieve the greatest glory. And as Rockne himself once wrote, sportsmanship means fair play. It means having a little respect for the other fellow's point of view. It means a real application of the golden rule. Well, you young fellows here today are living proof of the truth of, truth of Rockne's ideas. All of you, coaches and players, have made sacrifices and bore many a burden, and you did it all for one goal, to be the very best. Well, as I mentioned when I was on your campus last year, Canute lacked spirit in his ball players. Once when he was working with the four backfield stars who became known as the Four Horsemen, one of them, a fellow named Jim Crowley, just couldn't get it right. Now, you know, I never tell ethnic jokes, unless they're about the Irish. <laughs> but maybe today I can be permitted some leeway. Rockney, who, by the way, was Norwegian, was commonly called the Swede. He finally got exacerbated after Crowley muffed a play and hollered, What's dumber than a dumb Irishman? And without missing a beat, Crowley says, a smart Swede. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this year's Fiesta Bowl, you showed us what you're made of and reached the goal of being the very best. The West Virginia Mountaineers didn't luck into playing you for the national championship. No, just like you, they fought hard all season and earned the right to play for the title of being number one. And and just like the Fighting Irish, they're a talented, well-coached team, and they deserve a salute. Their record should make them proud. And speaking of pride, I noticed that Coach Holtz thought Rockney would be proud of this team, and I'm sure he would be. Right now, I can't help but think that somewhere far away, there's a fellow with a big grin and a whole lot of pride in his school. And he might be thinking to himself that maybe you want another one for the Gipper. <laughs> Congratulations and God bless you all. Mr. President, we are extremely proud of this team and of its fine coaching staff headed by Lou Holtz. You have honored our campus twice during the term of office as president, once as commencement speaker and honorary degree recipient, which obviously makes you a Notre Damer, and more recently for the Newt Rockne stamp commemoration. We thought it would be fitting on this time in which you have honored the university and its winning football team to make a small presentation to you. Since I'm a little puny, I've asked two of our seniors and leaders this year to bring over a particular plaque that I'd like to read the inscription for. This is Frank Stams and Wes Pritchett. It reads, monogram sweater awarded to George Gipp Halfback of the Fighting Irish, 1917-1920, presented to Ronald Reagan by the University of Notre Dame, January 1989. I, I think that's a... That's a great sacrifice by the university, but believe me, no one could have it and treasure it more than I will. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. You want to take the sweater? Let's take the sweater out.
just open it up. There it is. Hey. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Just I like that's to say a few words. Second, okay. right, Mr. President. It's indeed a thrill for us to be here. As the number one football team in the country, we're exceptionally proud of that. We're also exceptionally proud of the fact that we've won an award for graduating 100% of our entire football team of five years ago. We also realize that to reach a position such as this, you have to be very lucky and very fortunate. We're also aware of the fact that many other teams could have been standing here rather than us had it not been for many good fortunate things that happened to us. It's a great thrill to be number one, but it's also a great thrill for any American. It's a dream to be able to come to the White House to meet the President. I know I speak on behalf of our football team and we say we're deeply gratified and feel blessed to be here. It's been a great honor for us. But it's also a great honor to come here representing the University of Notre Dame family. We have just a small gift, and we have three captains here, Mark Green, Andy, uh, Andy Heck, and Ned Bokar. And we know that you're going to be packing up, Mr. President. <laughs> we just brought you something that you can pack in. It says Notre Dame. It says Ronald Reagan, and it said the Gipper. We brought you a sweater. It said the National Championship. But we brought you something that signifies a great accomplishment for us. When we consider the accomplishments that you've made since you've been in Oval Office, this may seem very small, but we want to share our greatest accomplishment with you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well, wow. <laughs> right guards stick together. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is this is a great day. And, uh, well, I won't find anyone else to throw it to. I'll just hang on to it. <laughs> Well, I thank you all very much. Congratulations to all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. <laughs> the man who conceived the idea of guards in the line, instead of charging forward against the other linemen on many plays, backing out and coming out of the, round, the line and leading the interference. And I don't know whether I could have had a football career if he hadn't done that, because <laughs> our coach copied it. I weighed 175. And I remember one day when the player opposite me in the line uh, would go on to play with the Chicago Bears and then later be eight years all pro tackle. And he weighed 275 pounds to my 175. His name was George Musso. And I can't tell you how grateful I was to Rockney as I would back out of the line to run the interference. <laughs> made the job possible. <laughs> well, I've got to go to work. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Well, thank you very much.
Yep. Yeah. 